Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is I do elder law um, at Myrick O'Connell, which is uh, our offices are in Westboro. But this isn't about uh, elder law. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of my presentations before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're, <laughs> you're like Frank and Mary, you want to stay right in North Bro. You don't want to move away. You don't want to go to San Diego with your kids and do any of that stuff. You want to stay home. So the question for this show is, what, who are the people you need to know? And what are the things you no, need to know about to stay here? And sometimes they are issues that are directly related to as a senior, and sometimes they're more global Northboro issues that you really want to know about because you're here and you want to be connected to the community. So the, to figure out who those people are, uh, I, I, I convinced your new Council on Aging director, not so new anymore, she's aging quickly. as we Four months. Four months. Four months. Liz, Liz Tridiak, um, whom I had actually known from her prior life before she came here, um, and But her job is to find the people that you need to know so that we can talk about the things that you need to know about. So thank you very much, Liz, once again, for doing this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And, and uh, whom do we have today? So we're lucky enough to have Julie Brownlee with us. She's from the assessor's office here in Northboro. And Julie, I think your title is assistant assessor here? Uh, reversed, assessor assistant. Assessor assistant. <laughs> so thank you so much. You've been really helpful to me here um, as I'm getting uh, the lay of the land and figuring things out and trying to put out resources for our seniors. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came into this position, how long you've been here and what you do. Okay, so um, I have been in this position for six years. And when I came to it, it was a brand new thing to me. I worked at North Bros Library for 12 or 13 years before that. So although I don't live in town, I live in Holden, um, the community is super familiar to me and I know a ton of people, which is so much fun. Um, so I came over here, I needed a change for my brain. I stood all the time at the library and I needed to sit down a little bit. And um, it's been a great place to be. Fantastic. So one of the questions, so before I came into municipal government, I had heard the word assessor, but I had no idea what an assessor did. What is, I just kind of had this vague idea that they look at your house and determine a value. Can you explain it far better than I can? Yeah, so the, and they're, they're actually not the person who collects the bills, right? So the, the, no one needs to think, oh, my God, this is the tax collector I'm looking at. right? No, now. we are not. No, we don't so. take that blame. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, before I worked here, I thought the assessor was kind of like the appraiser that comes to your house when you are going to get a mortgage and they want to make sure that the value of your property matches the mortgage money that they're going to loan you. But... Um, Assessing is about making sure that everyone is sharing the town's tax burden fairly. So um, in Massachusetts, you have to be, it's called, um, I'm sorry, I missed my phrase. Is there your you're ba you're taxed on what you have. And we just want to make sure that we've got it correct, that it's fair, that it's equitable. The difference between the appraiser is that you are, we're taxing the entire town. We're looking at everything as a huge group. We're doing statistics on everything. Whereas a real estate agent or appraiser comes in and looks at your house and four or five other comparable houses. So it's a, it's an entirely different approach. And, and, and as a, as a curiosity, so, how, and how often that you're looking at the town globally, how often do you kind of relook at the town so that when people are seeing their assessment, it is, it's in relation to, you know, sometimes you wonder, well, I'm old. I remember in the old days, right? Oftentimes things didn't get reass reassessed actually until some properties sold, you know? Uh, and and it, was, it was really very, the data was very, very old. But I, it, so could you give folks a sense of how that is today? Yeah, the state has changed things dramatically. Um, it did used to be 
once in a while, about every 10 years. And even then it was just who yeah. you could get in to see on once every 10 years. In this town, um, we make it around to everybody about every six years. You know, you don't have to let us into your house. And there are reasons for and against that. But um, but we go out to each house and look at it every six years from the outside, at least to make sure that that what we can see is right. Uh, we try to look at all the sales, like you said, and that's changed drastically because MLS is out there with photos. So the important thing the important thing to know is that if you think that your house is valued too high, we want it to be right. We are always happy to come out and look at it. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of people say nothing's changed, but, and they're thinking about people who have upgraded their bathrooms or finished basement, but nothing changed means that your house is depreciated and we might have the value too high because we haven't been in it for a long time. Right. So, so, so the assessor is your friend. The assessor is not the scary person trying to make you pay more tax. The assessor is your friend. Yes. No, really not. We we really make it up to you. We leave a we leave a door hanger, and you can call or you cannot. We're not going to bother you. We're not going to. There's no. There's nothing punitive about saying no. Um, this might be a little early in the conversation, but it's really important to know also that in January every year on your tax bill, you will see the new value of your property. So we're looking at the whole town for a whole year of analysis. And when we figure out what it is late in the fall, the state comes in and reviews everything that we've done. And then it becomes official. So in January on your tax bill, it will show you your new value. If you think that it's wrong, if you think it's too high, you can come in for the month of January and there's a chance that if you're right and we're wrong, which happens, then we will credit you on your taxes for that amount. Um, if you think it's too low because you want to sell the house, we go out on those kinds of inspections too. Thank you. That's great info. Um, so when I think of property taxes and home values and things like that, I hear often the words abatement and exemptions and all these other possibilities to help people afford to live in their houses. Can you explain the difference between, is there, an, is there a difference between abatement and exemption? Yes, an abatement can be filed by anyone. It's, it's the, I didn't use the word, but that's the period in January where if you think your property value is wrong, you can file for an abatement. Um, I should say that there are two main reasons we could have your property value wrong. And one is if we haven't been in and we have the data wrong. So we have you down as having three bathrooms and you really only have two. That's a data correction error that's easily fixed. The other reason is if you think that your house is valued too high for the market. So you think that we've done the sales analysis wrong. So those are reasons and take a look at your tax bill. We mail them out at the end of December, come right in the beginning of January because um, we talk you through the process. We help you with everything you need to file the application and to understand how it all works. It's a very hands-on approach that we have. We're, um, we really hold your hand. We don't want to make you suffer. We just want it, things to be right. <laughs> um, exemptions are an entirely different thing. And um, in Northboro, there are several types of, of exemptions. It is a type of money taken directly off your tax bill because of your income or assets or for other reasons. But it has nothing to do with the value of your house. It's, it's about your um, financial status. Okay. So when I go on the Northboro Town website, um, there's a tab that says property tax relief options, and that's all the, all the different possibilities. Yes. Okay. So which one have you found is the most popular for people in town that they utilize? And which one's the most underutilized option for property tax relief? Um, Great question. 
<laughs> no, because a lot of people just don't know, you know, that right, there's this variety of things. There yeah. are a huge variety of things. The most popular are the two that most people fall into those categories if they fall into any of the categories and that is um, Justin may have spoken with you Justin Souza the veterans agent there's a veterans exemption it's based on um, the veteran the veterans agency deciding that you're disabled so if you are 10% or above disabled you can get money off your taxes from the town of Northboro and um, that's a very straightforward thing to apply for you basically sign your name and you give us um, a letter from the VA about your disability and you've got it. And, and does that exemption apply only to veterans or, or to, to, could do spouses or widows, do other people get any kind of benefit? Fantastic question. So as long as, um, as long as the disability was assigned, then the spouse, the widow can get it. Um, yes continuing forward I think until they marry but that's um so I but we haven't actually had that come up yeah. um I, I should mention a couple of years ago the state added another category many many of these I'm going to back up again many of these programs are set up by the state and then the towns have the choice to adopt them so um the, the town of Northboro has allowed the veterans exemption for the disability they've also beginning two or three years ago um, if a veteran dies from a service related illness or in service um, then the spouse is entitled to a full exemption on her property oh yes so this hmm. is the major, major thing um, right now we have three people who qualify to receive that. And um, I know that one example, the veteran died, you know, decades later, but from Agent Orange. Well, that was the result of serving our nation. So their spouse qualified to get the full exemption. So I was wondering, Julie, can you take advantage of more than one tax relief program? So if you're a veteran, can you take advantage of the one you were just speaking about and then also do, I think there's one if you're blind? Uh, in general, no. There are a couple of exemption, exceptions. Um, if you're married and you're the veteran, um, you can qualify for that one and your spouse might qualify for one that's for low income and assets or your spouse might qualify for one that's blind. Uh, the only one I can think of offhand is where you can get more than one. There's a, um, well, this is not an exemption, but it's another program. For people who want to stay in their houses and are very low income, you can defer your property taxes. So um, you, your spouse could get an exemption. If, you're, if your total bill was, say, $6,000 for the year, and as a veteran, you got money off. And as a low-income family, you got money off. Then, and your new total is down to say 4,000 or 4,600. That would be your total tax bill. And that amount you could defer if you qualify. You would have to call our, our office to find out all the ins and outs and talk about the pros and cons. But the essential idea is that you are going to, um, the town is not going to charge you for the taxes until uh, you die. So, and at that point, there will be interest added on, but there's no interest added on in the meantime. And as I always tell my clients, you know, it's a bill, but you're going to be dead. So don't worry <laughs> about it a whole lot. So. I'm really glad you brought the deferral up because I, I talk about this to clients all the time. And, and, you know, and the benefit, while it varies in some communities, the income limit is extremely low. I know that the state can, can the state, according to the state, you have to allow this benefit if your income, family income is, is, uh, is not more than uh, $20,000, which is really low. 
but communities can vary that. And, and, and Northrow is very, is very generous on this. And because they're concerned, uh, this, I'm sorry, I'm on my soapbox, but because they're concerned, <laughs> these are people in most cases who've lived in town all their lives. They pay taxes all their lives. And for many of my clients, these are my clients. So their biggest bill, other than food in many cases, is their tax bill. And if they're Frank and Mary, all they want is to stay home until they die. You know, they don't want to move. So, so, so to know that, that, that they can basically get what I sometimes think of as a reverse mortgage from the town, right? Where the town is basically saying, look, you don't have to pay this money until you sell the house or until you die. And, and that the interest rate is not, you know, t t is not high. I don't know what it is in North Broadway. It tends to not be high. It's a wonderful program. So I'm so glad you brought this up. Yeah, it, it really, to us in the office who aren't participants, but it's always seemed like a fabulous opportunity that you can stay in your house, that you aren't putting out that money. And then when your house is sold, it pays off the mortgage and, or it pay, excuse me, it pays off the deferment and you're all set. Right, yeah. right. That's great information. Now, is there are there any now particular uh, exemptions as opposed to this referral that is especially you tend to find applying to elders or to seniors? Oh, yeah. Well, most most of the exemptions that we have are for seniors. Ah. Yes. So the 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 best one is a thousand dollars off a year and that's based on income and assets and it's not straight numbers um it depends on whether you get social security or not and but the the really important thing to know is that we we do have a chart it needs to be updated on our website but it will be within the next couple of weeks um, <laughs> because the numbers go up a little bit every year so the income and asset levels go up a little bit every year which is a good thing and we need to update that but if you look at that chart online, we or if you call us, we will mail it to you. Um, you can see if you're near it. If you're if you're well over it, you can call us anyway because there might be other things we can tell you. If you're not sure if you would qualify or not, always call us because the math is a little detailed and we can walk you through it and figure it out. And we and and we might say you come close but you don't quite make it this year by next year you might because the numbers go up a little bit so we keep a long list of people who want us to mail these things to them which we will do in mid-september so call us anytime to get on the list it's 508-393-5005 we'll ask our friend at, at north Road cable to keep that number on the on the on the bar below or above the screen so that people can call it what, what the number um, again what is the number 508-393-5005. And can you just mention, I just have a, a last question on this piece, Liz. Is, 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 there, is, this, is the deadline the same for all of these exemptions regarding when to file? And kind of in general, when, when is it? So there's, there's one that has a different deadline, I'll tell you in a moment. But for all the rest of them, it is um, the first day of June. The last day of May, excuse me, you know what? I said that wrong. We had extended it this year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So that was the date for 2020. But the normal date for all other years, and as far as I know for next year, is April 1st. But <laughs> we don't want you to wait till the last minute. We send out the information to most people in mid-September. If we can get all your information by the early November, then, and you qualify, so say you qualify for the $1,000 off, then on your January bill that's mailed out, then we can take off 500 and the following bill we can take off 500 If you wait, you have to pay the taxes up front and get a refund. And it's more complicated. I don't think it works as well for most people. So we, we really um, try to get you to do it as early as possible. Great, thank you. That's great, Julie. What I love about this is that people can call either the assessor's office, they can call us here at the senior center. Either way, we're going to help you get the information um, to help you save on your property taxes. And I love that you said people can call just to ask because um, it's not like you don't want people to 
take advantage of these programs. You want people to do that. We want people to be able to stay in their homes. We want people to age in place. And this is just one of the tools that can help them do that. Yeah, I coming from the library world, I, that's that's our favorite thing to get people to ask us questions. And I've carried that <laughs> over to this job. And it, there's so many resources that a lot of times if someone asks us a question, we can take them to something they didn't know about at all. We can mm -hmm. go far go farther than the question they've asked. Right. And 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 Liz, now this happened the last two weeks ago with the with the veterans agent. Everybody in Northborough seems to be like her. That there are these sweet <laughs> people. Because, 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 Julie, one of the reasons for this show really is to have is so that you know we've got a, you got a lot of we got a lot of Frank and Marys out there who are at home, mm -hmm. um, and who think, oh my God, the assessor, the tax collector, those sound like very scary p people. But then they see somebody sweet like you, and it's like, gee, I could talk to her, you know. <laughs> So it's so, that's so, a nice lady. <laughs> yeah, this is like a nice lady. What you know? That's so great that she came from the library to the assessor's office. How cool is that? You know? Yeah, that's just, it's it's terrific. just it's so much easier to pick up the phone and make that call to ask for help or ask for information or advice if you know the face that you're calling or kind of know the the person even through the TV or through YouTube however people are going to be watching this, that you can make that connection. It just makes it that much easier to reach out. Um, so again, we just want to encourage anyone watching that there's going to be no wrong door when you call somebody in Northboro, whether it's myself or Julie or the tax collector, we're not just going to say, nope, sorry, not my department. We're going to put you, point you in the right direction. So Liz, this is the reason why I'm so happy you're doing these shows. You know, I think this is—I think this stuff is really valuable to a lot of folks. Bringing people like Julie on is really valuable. Um, and, you know, once again, now they have her contact information, but they should—but knowing that they can also go to you, you know, if they're kind of concerned about this to figure out is like a big deal. So, thank you for doing this. Th thank you, Julie, for for being on this the show. We really appreciate it. Um, folks, who are, folks, if you're watching, so we're, we're so so Liz and I have agreed we're going, we're doing these shows, uh, kind of um, now that COVID has kind of calmed down, we're going to do the shows once every uh, or twice a month, right? Um, and if you've got any questions, obviously you want to call her, right? And we'll make sure that her information is always on these on these uh, um, on the the kind of the sidebar of these shows. So thank you very much, Liz, for doing this. Thank you, Julie. Uh, and folks, we hope you find this valuable and we'll hope to see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. Thank you very much.